out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Be viewing the outpouring for your refreshing and in filling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on me. The word of God says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Viewers, welcome today to the outpouring. And uh, it's interesting that the name of the program is the outpouring. And yesterday we had such an outpouring of rain in the land. I would call it a cleansing. That was rain and water and flood and just about everything. But I give God thanks today that we had no loss of life. Well, at least none that I heard of. And uh, we did not experience a category one, two, three, four, five hurricane, you know. So really and truly, in the midst of whatever happened, we really still give God thanks and praise. So today, today we are going to speak about prayer and the word of God because more than anything else, our witnessing is important. Our church attendance is important. The works that we do is important. Our walk of obedience is important. But everything we do and all that we are is as a result of the time that we spend daily in prayer, in the word of God, in worship unto God. Our quiet time, our prayer time is what energizes us, is what cleanses us, is what positions us, is what equips us, is what edifies us. That quiet time with God, that prayer time, that time in the closet. A lot of you would have seen War Room and the older woman taught the younger woman the importance and the power of prayer. A lot of times with our words and with our actions, we bat the wind, we run hither, thither, and yon, and we have no results. Sometimes we're busy with a lot of church activities. we also doing a lot of good works, and in isolation, the, these things are good. However, if they are not from a place of prayer and a place of relationship with God, and a place where we commune with God, we get the heart of the Father, we are led, anointed, and empowered by the Holy Spirit, and we are following in the footsteps of Jesus, then we are really wasting our time. So I came today to challenge you about the importance of your personal prayer life. Do not be so busy in any given day that you cannot spend time with God. It's important for you to build altars. We saw in the book of Genesis where Abraham, you know, when he went to certain places like under the tree and by Mamre and in those different areas in Bethel, he, he would build altars. And it's not, we, today we're not speaking about the actual building of an altar with wood or with stone, but it's that place, it's that place in the heart and it's also that physical place that we set aside to meet with God. And in sometimes, in some instances, we are actually the altar because the time that we spend in prayer, the time that we spend in communion with God, there is a presence that of God that we live with and that only comes about from that quiet time with God. There are also physical places that become like your altar. I have the prayer room at Otley Street and sometimes when persons come to that room and they sit down, I remember once one person said from the time she sat down, she just wanted to cry. And it was not a cry of sadness, it was just a presence of God. Another person said, you know, I can't I feel like 
a serene something just take me over and you have different comments and why is this it's as a result of these places and spaces being set aside and prayer taking place there i encourage you today find a place in your home find a corner find somewhere where you can meet with god i remember when i worked at the airline and you know some days it will be so challenging when we have delays um sometimes cancellations of flight all different problems you could imagine and my quiet place to meet with god was in the washroom and i remember in some instances when i was really caught between a rock and a hard place and not knowing what decision to make or how to go about handling a difficult situation i will just go to the washroom and i will kneel down or i will bow my head and really cry out to god and god met me the holy spirit accompanied me downloaded wisdom and all different things just because i honored him and i sought his advice when we look at the entire life of david and david was a powerful powerful king he was a man after god's own heart david when it was time to go to war except that one time when he choose not to go to war and he got into so much trouble but normally David would ask the Lord he would seek the Lord he would say Lord should I pursue should I do this should I do that and I remember in one instance the Lord told him to pursue to go after them that the victory was in his hand and the next time when something happened and he sought the Lord and the Lord told him yes but don't go that way don't go direct against the enemy come around them on the side and the presence of the Lord was in the mulberry bushes you know so God always have a strategy for us and we can only receive these strategies and these you know this wisdom for this life and the solution for many challenges that we face we can only receive this by our communion by us spending time by us seeking the face of god the word of god says draw nigh to me and i will draw nigh to you we have different levels of prayer we have different types of prayer but pray we must and our prayer must always be guided and empowered by the word of god they go hand in hand like hand and glove they must go together because if they don't go together it's quite possible that we can pray amiss or we can pray and hear other voices that doesn't line up with the word of god and we go contrary so today if you're listening to this program i really want you to examine yourself examine your heart pull out your spiritual thermometer test yourself Am I still spending quality time with God? These are questions you have to ask. When last have I prayed and fasted? When last have I poured out my soul and my cry unto God? When last have I sat with the word of God and read the word out in the open, in the atmosphere? When last have I just it's been quiet and listen for the direction and the guidance of God. God has so much information, so much stuff he wants to download to us, but it can only come about as we spend time with God. In the book of Genesis, when God was about to send destruction on Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, God said, I cannot do this thing unless i share it with my friend abraham and that came about because abraham valued the presence of god abraham spent time with god we see enoch in a, a earlier part enoch walked with god so much that god just took him one day one day god said listen you know what enoch come up here that's it and Enoch walked with God. When we look at most of the foundation fathers, Jacob, Isaac, all these men, they had quality time with God. Jacob, he, on his way to his uncle's Laban house, he had that time where, you know, he prayed and he was 
lying on this on this rock and you know he cried out to God and it turned out that the exact place was a place where his father, his grandfather, sorry, built an altar and he was able to connect so much so that he connected with God and while he lay there on with a pillow, with a stone for his pillow, you know, and he saw the angels of the Lord ascending and descending, he said, Ah, behold, God is in this place and I knew it not. God wants to be in your place and in your space. God wants to spend time with you. God longs to share his heart to you, to reveal secrets, to empower you to be the best you that you can be. But this can only come about as you set aside time from your busy schedules to spend with the Lord. I'm going to go in a direction that most of you may not like, but you know what? I'll still go there. When you calculate the time that you spend on your devices, like your phone or on Facebook or you know, on the computer or hanging out with friends. When you, when you add up all that time and you compare to the time that you spend in prayer with God, God said he's a jealous God. And for some of you, you need to just turn off the phone or you need to just put it down. And sometimes what I say to myself, if somebody's dying, I'm not a doctor. If somebody died, they died already, I can bring them back to life, you know? So it's important for us to set aside every hindrance, every obstacle, everything that seemed to want to distract us from our time with God. Shut the door take off the phone there was a season that i evicted my phone from the bedroom my phone could not enter the bedroom it, i served it notice and it stayed out there for close to a year because it is important that we get ourselves back into balance because the thing about the phone and uh, you know all those devices is that they creep up on you and the time the time just goes and goes and goes and then you know you were going to pray and all you have left is five minutes before you have all the other things to do no 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 keep god and his word as priority in your life the word of god says seek ye first we all know what first is seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all things that you have need of will be added unto you if we put god first if we make god our priority if we make spending time with god the most important thing in our life and the most important time of the day and we honor god by setting aside places and spaces for god then the presence of god will visit us at the outpouring sanctuary which is at number 23 otley street there are certain spaces and certain places where i would just sit and either read the word in the atmosphere or pray or just sing worship songs and you know in retrospect now when i look back what i what i really did without consciously being aware that that is what i was doing is that i was creating portals where the angels of the lord could ascend and descend and it's it's so interesting that in some of those places you know when i think back there's an area at the back and uh, on about four or five different occasions ministers will come there and they will minister to me right in that spot and it's not coincidence or by chance because that area is an open portal and i sat yesterday and i'm thinking back what happened in that place in the early why that place became a portal and when i remembered they were building the roof on the other side and that side didn't have a building as yet and i through a, like a blanket on the ground and I remember lying down in that place and this would have been many years ago and saying Lord let your angels ascend and descend in this place and while I was lying on the ground there I was giving God thanks because the roof was finally going up and you know it was really a struggle to get to that point at that time and 
unknowing to myself, I created an open heavens in that place. And as a result of it, it's, it's just so easy to sit there and enter into the presence of God. It's as if you don't have to like fight up, you know, you, you just sit there and you come straight into the presence. And I really thank God for prayer places and prayer spaces. And it's critical that we do that you know in our home i remember speaking with different ministers at different times and some of them will share that their prayer time and, and their real walk with god started you know in the backyard in the bush in the banana patch wherever they found a quiet place to meet with god god met with them god is a faithful God and if you honor God by setting aside times places and spaces to meet with God God will meet with you and when you have these places and spaces I will tell you if you are in trouble or if you are faced with a serious serious challenge you could just go to that place and it's as if the angels of the Lord are dear waiting for you to transport your requests on their wings into the throne of grace. The word of God says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. These are different levels of prayer. We have to be consistent in prayer. The word of God says, pray without ceasing. And you may wonder, well, how could we pray without ceasing? You could be in an atmosphere and an attitude of prayer. Sometimes just, just the awareness and the constant song in your heart or you know your internal spirit language unto God. You can do it. You can pray without ceasing. You can be in constant communication with the Father. He is always just a prayer way. Jesus was our most beautiful example. And you know you'd find that on many different programs. I will talk about prayer because it is just simply so important. And Jesus is our main example. Jesus would sometimes spend the entire night in prayer. Sometimes he will go off early early in the morning while it is yet dark and commune with the father and as he traveled throughout his day he will say things like I only do what the father shows me you know and this came about as a result of the time that he spent in prayer he was empowered by the time he spent in prayer in communion with the father if you need to be empowered for your daily life for your daily activities connect to the source god has given us a wonderful wonderful privilege huh? and it's a privilege called prayer father i give you thanks today god i thank you that we can just connect with you God, I pray for all those who are viewing today's program. Oh, Father, that those who their prayer life has become a drag or fallen by the wayside or not as important as it should be. God, whatever the challenge is that people who are viewing this program may be experiencing in their prayer life at this time. Father, I pray for them. God, that... The presence of your Holy Spirit will so saturate them. God, that they will truly do as your word said, draw nigh to you. God, and you will draw nigh to them. Father, I thank you, God, that we can invite you into every single situation of our life, that you do answer prayer. God, you have allowed us to connect, God, with supernatural and impossible things. God, through prayer. Father, I thank you, God, that we can cry unto you as Jeremiah 33 3 says, call and I will answer and show you great and mighty things. And today, God, I call on behalf of the viewers. God, whatever they are faced with, God, some may be challenged, God, with their children, their loved ones. Some may be challenged, God, in their marriages. God, some may be challenged, God, with finance. God, some may be challenged in one way or the other. God, is as if some people having real, real issues on the job. God, some having issues with property. God, some having 
having issues, God, with purchasing of, of whether it be land or wanting to build a house or purchase a new car. God, all these different issues of life, God, that your people are faced with. Oh God, God, I stand in the gap with them. God, I intercede on their behalf, Father. Oh God, that you will meet them at the place of their need. God, that they, their situation will not choke them or it wouldn't turn them away from you or get them so frustrated and so downcast and so depressed and so discouraged god that they will not pray but god i declare today god that a prayer shall rise up in them oh god that they will seek your face god that they will call upon you oh god that they will seek after you in prayer god that their situations will be resolved Oh God, I thank you, God, that some prayer, God, you answer before we even pray. God, there are other prayer you answer while we are yet praying. God, there are some prayers that you answer in a little while. God, there are some prayers you answer a long, long time after. God, that there are some prayer also, God, that doesn't even get answered in our lifetime. But God, those prayers hang in the atmosphere. God, for hundreds of years and await the appointed time. God, we thank you that you answer prayer. God, not always in the time that we expect or the way that you expect, but God, you answer prayer. And God, I give you thanks today. God, I thank you that you're meeting different persons in different homes in different situations at their place and at their time of need. Oh God, I thank you for the testimonies that are going to come forth, Father. Oh God, that they're going to go to church and they're going to testify of your goodness and of your greatness. God, that their prayer life will be reactivated, Father. Oh God, that the people who are viewing today will draw nigh unto you, God, and you will draw nigh to them. Oh Father, I thank you that your words are spirit and they are life and they are truth. And as we walk in obedience and as we pray your word, God, you will answer oh god we give you the praise the honor and the glory in jesus name amen you know i would like to just share a testimony with you concerning a prayer request that i made to god i remember leaving work one day and i had absolutely no money in my purse and uh, i don't know why i didn't borrow from somebody but anyway i said you know what god god will provide yes so i went i got into a taxi and i was i wasn't going home i was going to a funeral at the methodist church you know so i'm busy and i'm going and i say well somebody may come in a taxi that i may know or something will work out you know and i'm confident and i'm going and uh, got in the taxi believe in god praying that somebody will come in it turned out that nobody came in the taxi that i knew and i continued praying i said lord let me don't be embarrassed today. Please, please come through for me. I have to be able to pay the taxi driver. So we're we getting into Scarborough now. Nothing happening. I'm starting to look outside to see if I see somebody that I know. Nothing happening. So as we're going up town, I say, well, my brother work in Royal Bank. So he might be standing outside and I could get, you know, the money from him to pay the taxi. And I passed by the bank, no sight of my brother. I say, God, you got to help me. God, you got to help me. And would you believe, as the car pulled up outside the Methodist Church, my brother was standing right there. And I just said to him, give me some money to pay this taxi, you know. And uh, God answered prayer. He took me, I would say, to the wire, to the 99th hour, right down to the end. But... God answered prayer. God is a prayer answering God. So I want to encourage you today. There are some things you may have been praying for quite a while and it's as if God not hearing. But God answers prayer. When Lazarus died and um, the two sisters, Mary and Martha, when word went to him and Jesus took how many days before he came, you know, they were praying and they were desperate. And by this time, I mean, he was dead, decaying, rotting. And then Jesus turned up and Jesus said that he is the resurrection and the life. And we all know that account. 
where he called forth Lazarus and Lazarus came forth. It wasn't in the time that they wanted it to happen, but it did happen. God is a God of perfect timing. God knows exactly where you are. He knows your exact situation and he will answer prayer because he is a prayer answering God. As I get ready to close this program, I would like to just share a few different verses with you from a book that I have been reading. There are verses from the Bible, but the emphasis is on your prayer time and the importance of you going and spend time with the Lord, whether it be in your church or finding your own quiet time. So Luke 4, 16 says, And he came to Nazareth, this is Jesus, where he had been brought up as and as was his custom he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up to read so it shows there the importance of the reading of the word john 18 1 to 2 when jesus had spoken these words he went forth with his disciples over the book sidron where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples and judas also which betrayed him knew the place for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. So Jesus often went to that garden to spend time in prayer with God. Daniel 6.10 Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his kneel, knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did it was his habit of prayer. Is prayer your habit? God commands us to pray and meditate on his word. Joshua 1, 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success genesis 3 8 to 10 this talks about adam and eve and they heard the voice of the lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord amongst the trees of the garden and the lord god called unto adam and said to him where art thou and he said i heard thy voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and he hid himself so this was where he backslid and uh, he had to hide himself because as it was his custom, God came down to meet with them and to have fellowship with them. God is interested in us having quality time with God. Viewers, I pray that this program would have been a blessing to you, would have been an inspiration for you to take your prayer life into a deeper place, for you to set up your altars, for you to meet with God, for you to make your prayer time and your Bible reading time the number one priority. For you to set aside every distraction, every obstacle, every hindrance so that you can press into the Father. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and grant you his peace. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. He is knocking at your heart's door. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour Be viewing the outpouring your for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit.